push over on the other stage last time, so I'm going to sneak in a little early. <laughs> Heck with you guys over there in container time. All right, a couple of uh, silver sponsor shout outs. As uh, most of you know, we're organizer attendee sponsored conference. And the only way it really happens is we have a lot of organizers who help us out. Um, three sponsors to shout out right now Atlassian. Uh, Atlassian, they're in Austin now. Woot! Uh, deliver fast and reliable DevOps at Atlassian Tools. Experience fewer failures and faster recovery by having developers and IT collaborate on Jira software and Jira service desk. Tie automated build, test, deployment together with Bamboo and share knowledge with Confluence. Thank you, Atlassian. Civitas Learning. Civitas Learning is a well funded SaaS startup here in Austin. We are setting out to transform higher education using big data analytics to radically improve the learning experience and transform academic and finance outcomes. We are partnering with leading institutions to create the world's first organizing platform for higher education data, translate insights from the data to actionable and consumable recommendations that are delivered through SaaS organizations. Our customer base includes the most innovative and top performing institutions in higher education. Our philosophy is simple. Hire amazing engineers, give them the best tools, work environment, and surround them with a great team. Uh, last one, thanks, Avitas. Column Technologies. Column Technologies is a privately held global technology solutions. Our enterprise solutions make solutions automate key DevOps principles and help align customers to meet today's digital transform challenges. Column success is sustained from the building long-term relationships aligning goals with its customers and collaborate business technology that integrate people, process, technology, and support. Thanks to our silver sponsors for making this happen. Appreciate it. And these guys love when you give them the love on Twitter. All right, next up, uh, from Seattle, Washington, uh, bringing her expertise and knowledge to DevOps Day Austin. Love that happening. Uh, getting a lot of people from all over the country at this DevOps, and that's great. Uh, Jody Wolfborn is, uh, she speaks several languages, which always impresses me, because I'm just a computer geek, and I do not know how to speak any other languages. Um, she's currently at Chef Software, and let's bring up Jody. All right, can you guys hear me? Good? Excellent. Uh, welcome. Uh, I just want to go out on the record and say you do actually belong here. Don't be fooled by the name of the presentation. Um, we're going to talk about some different ways that you can kind of cope with imposter syndrome when you're feeling kind of down and talk about what it is and yeah. So who the heck am I? I as Lee said, I am Jody Wolfborn. I am a self-professed imposter. Um, I have been in the IT industry for about seven years. Um, and before that, I was a theater major, so I've been impostering all my life. Uh, I am a dog person, and I have a very short attention span, just like a dog, so I apologize if I go on some random tangent that doesn't quite make sense and then bring it back. Um, and I love punctuation, so you will see very many exclamation marks in this uh, presentation. So uh, let's go over some rules of engagement. To begin with, some of these techniques are a little bit cheesy sounding. Um, they still work though, they work for me, they work for other people. If they don't work for you though, don't, don't continue trying down that path, right? Um, take what does work for you and stick with that respectfully, leave the rest. So what the heck is imposter syndrome and why is it spelled so many different ways wherever I look? Um, imposter syndrome is an acute uh, feeling that um, your accomplishments that you have been, or your accolades, that you did not actually earn them, that whatever someone thought you did, maybe you didn't do it 100% the way they thought you did. Um, and uh, it's characterized by an intense fear that someone is going to expose you as a fraud. Now, I think we can all agree that uh, we are DevOpsians, right? We, none of us here is lying about being a DevOpsian. So I think we can all agree that we do belong here and none of us in this room is an imposter in that, in that aspect. Um, I, I put up some 
feelings that I have had in the past and uh, to be honest that I'm feeling a little bit right now. Um, so if you've ever thought like, oh my gosh, what am I doing here? All of these people are so much smarter than me or they know more about uh, SaaS or you know whatever technology, oh, they're gonna find out that I don't know what that acronym stands for, you know, like that that is imposter syndrome. Um, you are not alone if you have if you have experienced imposter syndrome. All of the people up here um, have direct quotes about feeling like imposters in their own industry. Tina Fey, I think we can all agree. Um, she's pretty successful and I think her success is well deserved, right? Like she writes all those shows and they're hilarious. She's not, she's not lying about being funny. I think she's funny, so therefore she's not an imposter, but she does feel like an imposter. Um, Maya Angelou, Chris Martin, Albert Einstein said, the exaggerated esteem in which my life work is held makes me very ill at ease. I feel compelled to think of myself as an involuntary swindler. Even Albert Einstein thought that he, he didn't deserve all the accolades that he had. Um, Supreme Court justices who have graduated from Princeton and Yale, not Princeton or Yale, but Princeton and Yale, also feel like imposters. So um, again, you're really, really not alone if you've experienced this. Okay, so why do you care about imposter syndrome? Why am I giving this speech? It is estimated that 70% of people will experience imposter syndrome at some point or other in their lives. If that's true, then 70% of everybody that you meet at some point in their life has been like, I don't belong here. Someone, someone is going to find out that I'm a fraud. If that's the case, you can pretty much get, I mean, Let's be honest, anybody who's come to see this speech probably has felt it at some point in their life and that's why they're here. But if you turn to the person next to you, chances are that person also suffers from this feeling. So again, you're not alone. Okay, let's go over some definitions for the rest of this uh, talk. Um, <clears throat> up here we have a, a beautiful little lemur kitty uh, representing an imposter. So this is the actual definition of an imposter. Oop, that is not, that is, sorry. Uh, the actual definition of imposter is someone who is lying about belonging to a group. Uh, raise your hand in here if you do not practice DevOps. Okay, a couple people. Raise your hand in here if you have never felt like an imposter. Okay, so no one raised their hands, which means, well, okay, that's not fair. <laughs> um, no one raised their hands, right? So no one is lying about belonging in this group at the very least. So we can all accept that we are in this together, right? Um, if you're not lying about belonging in this group, then you're not an imposter and, and you belong in this group. So woohoo, we all belong here, yay! Um, what is the opposite of an imposter? An adept. And an adept is a person who is skilled or proficient at what they do. It doesn't mean that they are perfect. It doesn't mean that they're the best. It doesn't even necessarily mean that anyone recognizes them as being great in their field. It just means they're skilled or proficient at something. So I'm willing to bet that everybody here has something that they are skilled in we can all accept that we are not imposters about that. Um, and then one more definition that's not up there is hubris. Um, hubris is sort of the arch enemy of people who suffer from imposter syndrome. Hubris is an excessive amount of pride or self-confidence and it is characterized by uh, usually the inescapable agent of one's own doom. So um, if you have hubris, uh, <laughs> then that means you have a lot of pride about not necessarily anything that you've earned. <laughs> I really like this quote from Bertrand Russell. Uh, the 
trouble with the world is that the stupid are cocksure and the intelligent are full of doubt. Um, I think this is the best quote. Uh, there are a ton of quotes like this out there, by the way. So, like, again, 70% of people feel the same way you do at some point or other. And there are probably a million quotes that match this one. So it is, it is a recognized thing, right? Um, you're not alone. <laughs> Uh, okay, so let's talk about some other definitions. There are two basic types of mindsets that I want to talk about um, in regards to imposter syndrome. There is a fixed mindset, and that is a binary translation of one's actions or accolades. You have failures or successes. You're either smart or you're dumb. You did it right or you did it wrong. The problem with this mindset is that once you make that mistake, once you fail at something, you don't try again. You give up. That's, you're, you're not trying to learn from that. You're just giving up, right? Um, I, I put this quote from Yoda up here. This might make me unpopular, but I don't like this quote. I, I don't think that that is true. Um, in a certain sense, sure, he's kind of just saying, Luke, stop being a whiny little baby and do the exercises that I'm telling you to do. Um, but the message puts someone in a fixed mindset. If, if there is only do or do not, then there's no like room for mistakes along the way. Uh, you, you can't, I, I think you should try. There is try. Um, there is try and learn, right? The opposite of a fixed mindset is a growth mindset, or I like to call it a learning mindset. And this is a fluid translation of your actions or accolades. Um, your success is measured from, uh, by whether you learned from what you did or not, whether you grew from that. If at first you don't succeed, try again, right? Learn from what you did the first time, take the things that were beneficial, and go forward with it. Um, it's very important uh, with, oops, sorry. It's very important um, to have a growth mindset, especially if you suffer from imposter syndrome. If you're sitting there going, everybody's gonna figure out that I don't know how to do a SQL injection or um, how to spin up a server in AWS. I don't know what AMI stands for. Oh, I don't know. If you're worried about that, um, figure out what AMI stands for or ask someone, how do I do this SQL injection? How do I create this server the way you need me to do it? Learn from what you're afraid of and move beyond the, the debilitating fear of being wrong. Um, you're not going to be wrong. You're just going to learn. And then the last definition that I have is your inner circle. So it's super, super, super important for anyone really, but especially if you suffer from imposter syndrome, to have an inner circle of people that you totally trust, right? Um, you can have mentors and friends and, uh, and your significant other or um, people that you trust, people that you can go to and ask them questions. Your inner circle is like your knights of the round table, right? You can trust each of them to help you uh, accomplish what you're trying to accomplish. This is a picture of my unconditional love and support in my inner circle. Uh, he will always love and listen to me unless there's a toy or a squirrel in the room. Oh, I, I don't know why there would be a squirrel in the room, but if that happens, I'm probably also not paying attention to whatever. So um, no, but I can go home at the end of the day and know that this guy is not going to be like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you made such a fool of yourself at DevOps days. You stood up there and made mistakes all over the place. How dare you? No, he's going to look at me and be like, oh, can I lick your face? Can you give me, can you pet my ears, right? Um, this is going to be uh, the person that you can talk to about anything. You can tell them your most embarrassing mistakes and they're not gonna go, oh my gosh, why did you do that, you idiot? They're gonna go, well, maybe next time. <laughs> try, 
try doing this, try preparing beforehand, or try this other way, right? Someone that you can trust to listen to you and provide you with guidance and serve as a trusted advisor. Um, I uh, snatched this lovely picture of Keanu Reeves because he's one of my faves. Um, if you guys have seen John Wick, then you know why he's one of my faves. And I'm super excited for John Wick too. Um, but no, this is from Devil's Advocate, the movie. So you also need someone in your inner circle who's going to challenge you, who's going to say, you know what, you made that choice and that's fine that you made that choice, but look, here, here is the other side of the spectrum, right? This is how you're feeling. Maybe this is how someone else is feeling. Someone who can really like open up, um, open up your thought process and your learning and help you see a different side of things that maybe you and your trusted advisors can't see because you're all in the same group. And then the last one, I didn't have a picture for, but um, the last one that's super important is having a mentor. And this mentor doesn't even need to be someone who doesn't suffer from imposter syndrome. In fact, if they suffer from it, they are probably more apt to be able to help you get through it as well. Um, they'll, in your time of doubt, you can go to them, they'll give you advice, they'll help you um, grow and learn and remind you that you do, you do belong here. All right, so how the heck do I deal with imposter syndrome? At the beginning, I said the opposite of an imposter is an adept, right? So you are not going to be an imposter if you remain adept. If, you're, if you remain aware, deliberate, em empathetic, powerful, and tenacious. Whether you're trying to pull yourself out of a pitfall or trying to help a friend or a coworker overcome their own imposter syndrome, these techniques will help you um, just try, right, to, to learn and grow. So be aware, know what things trigger your own imposter syndrome. Figure it out. If it's um, every time someone says an acronym that you don't recognize, start looking up acronyms. You know, Keep a list on your phone. This is what someone said. I didn't know what it was. Then next time you use that acronym, remember how you felt when someone used it around you, and maybe explain what that acronym means for, for the rest of the people that you're talking to. Um, Know what you're saying. Be aware that what you say can trigger someone else's imposter syndrome, right? Like, we're all in this together, so make sure that you're not saying things to people like, well, that seems like a weird choice that you just made, so I'm just going to go this way, right? That, that person is going to feel like crap if you say that to them. Don't, like, be a decent person, right? Um, Know that you're not alone. Look around this room. There, it's not five people in here, you know? There's a lot of people in here, and there are a lot more people out there. 70% of people, to be approximately exact. Um, and know when to admit that you don't know something. This is super key, right? If you feel like an imposter, the most powerful thing you can do is to say, hey, I'm feeling a little bit like an imposter. I don't know what you're talking about. Can you explain it to me? If that person explains it to you, then you know what it means, right? You, you gain that understanding and you're not going to be an imposter after that point. Whew. So, sorry, I need to take a little bit of a water break. Whew. All right, next. Let's be deliberate. Choose to change your attitude. If you find yourself in a fixed mindset, if you find yourself going, oh my gosh, I failed, I give up, change, identify that and change that. Say, oh my gosh, I failed, how can I make it better? Even if you don't reattempt what you did, don't stop at being a failure, right? <laughs> That's not. Nobody wants to like go around life, oh, I failed at that, yeah. I'm a failure at this. I'm a failure at this. Oh, I am also a failure at that. Um, choose to change the way you view things. Choose to change your language, too. Don't use phrases like um, failure and success, right? 
use phrases like, oh, this is a great learning experience. I made a mistake here. I didn't fail though, right? I, it, the only failure is if you don't continue to try learning from that. <sighs> Choose to learn and grow. That's, I, I feel like I've kind of gone over that a little bit. Uh, it's pretty straightforward too, so. And choose your support group carefully, okay? If you have a devil's advocate in your support group and all they do is devil's advocate, maybe that's not the right person, right? You need someone who is going to be um, trying to help you through that stuff and trying to help you learn and grow. Um, you don't wanna pick someone who, uh, you tell them what you did and they say, oh my gosh, I can't believe all those other people did that to you or whatever. Um, all, like That is wonderful sometimes. I like being told when I've done stuff right and wrong, whatever. But um, you don't want someone who is constantly going to be like, oh, it's okay, you didn't do anything wrong, you didn't do anything wrong. You, you need someone who's going to say, yeah, you kind of you did something wrong, but here's how you can learn from it. Be Empathetic. The first thing you need to do is be, I guess it's really sympathetic if you're doing it to yourself, but be empathetic to yourself. Listen to your body. If you're tired, if you're not eating well, if you're not getting out in the sunshine, getting vitamin D, which in Seattle is actually a pretty big issue, maybe not so much in Austin. It's nice and sunny outside, but... Um, Listen to your body. If you're tired or starting down a line of depression, your imposter syndrome is probably gonna flare up pretty strong. Um, listen to your instincts too. If, if something is telling you uh, that, that you're going down a path that you're not going to learn from this, you wanna pull yourself out of that. Um, you wanna make sure that you're always checking back in with yourself and verifying, yes, this is, um, I am learning from this, I'm not setting myself up for failure, failure, right? Um, listen to others actively. This one is so important because especially in, in the tech industry, it's so easy for people to just talk over someone or not, not listen to or not verify, look, this person is trying to interject. Maybe they have something that could help you in what you're doing. Um, you might be super smart. I'm sure everybody in this room is super smart, but like, the, you can always learn more, right? Nobody knows everything. So listen actively. And that means like uh, one of, one of Nathan Harvey's favorite phrases about open spaces is, um, you have two ears and one mouth. Listen twice as much as you speak. In that regard, if you're listening twice as much as you speak, everybody who needs to be able to, or who needs to speak should, should have the ability to speak. Um, and the last one, this, I know I said the last one on the last slide was the most important, but this one actually is one of the most important. Listen to the good things people say about you and know how to accept compliments, right? One of my biggest, sorry, one of my biggest issues is um, people compliment me and I'll be like, oh, thank you, but no, I didn't, that wasn't me, no, thank you. You know, back away quickly, don't let them see me. Um, you really need to be able to acknowledge that you do things right sometimes, right? Like, uh, I don't know, if you love painting and someone's like, hey, that's a great painting, but it doesn't look like what you intended it to look like, that's fine. Accept that compliment and know that someone else sees the beauty in what you've created, right? Or someone else sees how awesome that idea is. Be powerful. Um, some of you might have seen me standing over there before my speech. I'm super nervous, by the way. So um, I was doing power poses over there, right? Like be strong, be powerful, and practice the things that will help you feel that way, right? Standing like this with your arms up has been proven to make people feel more powerful. If you stand like this for 
uh, 30 seconds before whatever speech you're going to give, you'll go in there and maybe you'll make mistakes, but who cares, right? You're going to grow from that and you are going to focus on powering through that speech. Um, if you can't tell, I'm talking to myself right now. <laughs> All right, so you got to exude pride, right? And I'm not talking about hubris, thank you. I'm not talking about excessive pride. It is okay to be proud of your accomplishments. Don't, don't necessarily go overboard and, uh, and, and move into um, hubris, like I said, but be proud of what you've done. Like, you, Everybody here, I don't, I know a handful of people in here. I know that everybody here has things that they should be proud of. Anything, like take the things that you feel great about and practice feeling great about them. Uh, exude confidence, do your power poses before a speech or a meeting, or like if you're writing a paper on something and you're like, I don't, I'm not sure about this, stand at your desk, woo, for like, 10 seconds and then start your paper. Um, even if it doesn't make you feel more powerful or bigger, you can at least laugh at yourself, right? You're standing at your desk with your arms up all night, so. Um, exude strength. If you make a mistake, don't let that defeat you. Mistakes are not what define you. Um, you, you get to define what you are. So if you are confident about everything, even if you're faking it, then no one's gonna be like, that dude's an imposter, he doesn't belong here. They're gonna be like, that guy is so confident. I wonder what he has. I'm gonna go talk to him about it. Um, I don't like the phrase, fake it till you make it, but in this case, in the case of imposter syndrome, that is very important. If you don't feel, uh, if you're feeling like an imposter, the best thing you can do is say, I'm not an imposter. I belong here and these are the reasons why. List out reasons and once you've listed them out, you have those reasons to prove to yourself that you are not an imposter. Use yourself against yourself. Um, exude compassion. 70% of people feel this, right? A lot of people suffer from this. So be compassionate. Think about what you're saying, choose your words, be careful, and remember, if you feel it, maybe you can help someone else come through it too. Be tenacious. Don't give up. Fight the urge to give up. If you give up, if you give in, then you are an imposter. You don't belong there. If you don't learn anything from, from what you don't know or what you feel like you don't know, then, then it, imposter syndrome has already won out over you. Fight the concept of failure. It's okay to be afraid of failing. That's totally fine. Let's fight the concept of failure though. If you're failing, it's, it's not a failure. It is maybe a mistake. Maybe you're just doing something slightly differently than anybody else does. It's not, it's not a failure unless you give up. Fight the tedium. Um, don't, <laughs> don't Stick with something if it's not working for you. If you're getting bored by the measures that you're attempting to take to fight imposter syndrome um, and it's not working for you, try something new. Change up your plan. Try um, my coworker. I am. I do not believe in hypno. Hyp excuse me. Hypnosis. Thank you. It's not that I don't believe in it. I just have never experienced it or seen it where I'm like, yeah, that guy is clucking like a chicken because, because he's been hypnotized. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I don't even see, like I said, short attention span. I don't even remember why I talked about hypnosis, but oh, fight the tedium. Right. Okay. <laughs> I don't like hypnosis, but my coworker was like, hey, I know you're trying to give speeches there are these three minute hypnoses that you can listen to before your speech. I haven't tried them because my power poses are still working for me, but the moment my power pose doesn't make me feel powerful, I'm gonna try something new. I'm not gonna give up on, the, on, on trying to get through this. And that also goes along with complacency. Don't give up, fight the urge to give up, fight that complacency and fight the tedium. Remember, 
I don't know how many times I've said it already, you are not alone. This is pulled from uh, Science Girls Zero Twitter account. Um, she is a professor and she says her advice for students is the I don't know what I'm doing feeling, that feeling of imposter syndrome never goes away. That's kind of discouraging a little bit, but at the same time, it's also not, right? Like, you know it's gonna be there, so start practicing ways to get over it. Um, and then she says, you just learn the, but I can figure it out part, right? That goes along with the growth and learning mindset. Um, I, I, I'm terrified of this, but I think I can learn from it, so I'm gonna do it. This is a response to her post. Uh, when do you learn that second part? I'm still finished my PhD, I got a job, and I still feel like a fraud. This person is, they got their PhD and a job, and they still feel like a fraud. Why? They, they've accomplished so much. Uh, and finally, I will leave you with a couple of quotes. Now that you know, you don't have to be perfect. There's no such thing as failure, right? You can be good. You can go out and do the things that you want to do and be good at them because you're not freaking out about failing at them. You're learning from them and you are becoming adept. Um, I read a blog post about how to give speeches and um, it had a really great quote that I think applies to imposter syndrome. Um, and also just, I, I'm a very strange person. I feel like I'm pretty weird. And so it kind of speaks to my soul as well. Um, look, there's a chance that you're weird. I think that's awesome. Don't sit there in the crowd and wonder if the people next to you are really your peers and if you belong among them. You should be there sharing what you know, okay? So now that you have some tips and tricks go out and share them with other people, with the other 70% of human beings who feel this horrible, horrible feeling of not belonging. Make them know that they belong. And that is it. You are very adept at uh, imposter syndrome. Thank you, Jody. Thank you. I, I have a poodle who can hypnotize me and gets me out of my chair to get <laughs> make me get him a snack pretty often. Thank you so he's, much. He's trained you really well. Guys, yeah. uh, I'm gonna leave my cards up here, so if you guys have any questions after, or if you're like, you were full of crap, and I just wanna tell you that, <laughs> feel free to grab my